Why are pre-purchase slash adopt vet checks so important? What health things do vets typically search for when doing an examination of a horse that someone is going to buy? And what happens if the horse doesn't pass a vet check? So mm -hmm. you probably have had a lot of experience mm -hmm. in this last couple of months. I did. I went, this is, this was, Stan is the 12th horse I looked at. Wow. Yeah, which is not a ton, but um, I did three pre-purchases along the way. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, uh, there were two that didn't pass the vet check, and I'm air quoting because we don't really talk anymore in terms of passing or failing. Yeah. It's more like what the vet found today that the snapshot of I, I, what was identified today, medical issues and, and any maybe soundness issues, um, can I live with them? Can I manage them? Mm -hmm. Is the horse suitable for what I want to do with them? Yes. So it's very important that the veterinarian you choose for your pre-purchase exam. And I, I recommend you choose, um, the buyer choose the vet, and don't just go with the seller's vet. It's a bit of a conflict of interest. Um, there are paperwork and things you can sign and conversations you have to uh, reduce that risk. But I, because the horse I bought was local, I was able to use one of the vets that I, I say one of the vets that I use for, for my regular horse. And um, I know him very well, and I was able to on the other ones also, halt the pre-purchase at any time. Mm. As soon as I saw something that I could not live with or I knew I couldn't manage or was not going to allow me to go as far as I wanted to with the horse, I just said, we're done. Yeah. So um, that's really helpful to both be there and to work with the vet that you know. But to your point, like I think being realistic about what your goals are, what you really want to do, and are you going to be able to manage whatever the vet happens to find? Yeah, so here's an example. The, when we're doing the pre-purchase on Stan, um, he's going over it, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll make sure we'll answer all her questions, but um, he got to the ears and he's looking in, and you know these things called aural plaques, mm -hmm. little white lesions on the inside. He saw quite a few of them, and he looks at me horrified. And he says, he's got aural plaques. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Because I, that's a problem that I am willing to deal with. Yeah. He's, he wasn't head shy. You could put halters. Um, he hasn't had a bridle on yet, but it's not going to be a problem, trust me. Um, he doesn't care that he has white lesions mm -hmm. in his ear. Now, if we were looking at a different horse and you couldn't even touch his ear and you like looked at, at a distance and it's like, I think that's oral plaques, then I maybe would have had a different reaction. More but concern. Stan doesn't know he has oral plaques in his ear, and so I, it's not a thing. Oh, all right, that's a great idea. Yeah, one. yeah. So um, going to kind of more of her questions. Okay. So what are things, yeah. uh, what things do vets typically search for? Okay. So there's two parts, really, of a, of a, a general pre-purchase. There's a, the standard physical exam or a general assessment of the horse, and then there's a, a soundness portion of mm -hmm. it, right? Unless, there's a caveat, you're, you're buying this horse for breeding, mm -hmm. then there's a, another section called a breeding soundness exam. You would skip the, the soundness and go into breeding, breeding. soundness, yeah. Um, so for the standard physical exam, it's, it's what you think. It's, um, you look at the horse overall, you look at his conformation, his attitude and appearance, uh, and then you go organ system by organ system, and each vet will have their own like flow and paperwork because you want to do it step by step and not miss anything and do it in the same order every time. Okay. So every, every vet will have their own way of, of doing this. But you'll, you'll do a TPR because you want to know if they have a, a fever, if their heart rate and rhythm is correct. But you'll, you'll listen to the heart, you'll listen to the lungs, you assess the skin for health and, and wounds and lumps and bumps. My vet starts with the eyes mm -hmm. because if, if he, he has learned, if he sees a cataract in the eyes, many buyers, that's, that stops it. So it's like, why do the whole rest of the exam if I find something in this test that's going to end it? Yeah. So he looks there. But you, you just go over everything um, really with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> and, and you just point, the vet will point out, they usually have a scribe, like their, their vet tech, their assistant will be writing down things. And they'll be pointing them out as you're standing there and you can talk about them. Um, and, and then from the, the general physical, you would move into the soundness portion of it. And f like for a two-year-old, there wasn't a whole lot we could do. Mm. We were able to look at his conformation, evaluate his hooves. We're looking for symmetry, right? Uh, we're looking for conformational defects that could affect his way of going um, 
in the dressage ring and just under saddle. Like, does he have a club foot? Is yeah. he long in the fetlock? Does yeah. he have, do his, are his legs crooked? Yeah. You know? Um, we couldn't really do, we, we, could, we could watch him walk, trot, and canter, sort of free lunge. Right, mm -hmm. he kind of lunges, but not really. There's a lot of just a lot of just looking at <laughs> yeah. us, like um, we can't, we couldn't flex him and mm. like stand there and hold his leg up bent for 30 or 60 or 90 seconds and then trot him out. He's never done that. He doesn't know what to do. So, but <laughs> but a riding horse, you, you would do that. Um, you might even go under saddle mm -hmm. and, and do what you're going to do and see how the horse does. So we were able to watch him move at all three gates. Um, and palpate him and look at his confirmation, and then that was that was about it. Now, the thing we did do was take radiographs. Mm. It was important to me that he not have any defects in his um, joints, any chips, mm -hmm. um, any arthritis, that would make mean that the final conclusion on the pre-purchase would say uh, suitable for trail riding only, not suitable for upper level dressage. You're like, that wouldn't work for you. Yeah, ya. and that's what I got back on the first two. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I just don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to just trail mm. ride. I want to do more athletic stuff. So um, this horse has to be capable. Um, on this, the snapshot that we're taking today, remember the not a crystal yes. ball, but from, there's nothing that, uh, that we saw today that would preclude him from going as high as we want to go. And that's good for you though, because a lot of times, myself I know, when they meet a horse, you fall in love with them. You're like, but he's so cute, he's so pretty, he's so nice. And then you find out like, well, he's not actually built to do anything that you want to do. Yeah. And it's really hard to be like, okay. Objective. Yeah. Well, and that's why people ask me, why don't you just do your own pre-purchase exam? You're a bit. <laughs> <laughs> For exactly the reason that Dan mentioned. I mean, I'm not objective. Once I met this horse, it was like stars in my <laughs> eyes. It's very hard to see when you have stars in your eyes. So I had somebody out who I knew and I trusted to be objective. Yeah. And and he knew I'd be upset if he found anything. I mean, poor guy, no pressure on him. But um, I'm like, good luck on that You're exam. like, no Don't pressure, and I already love him. <laughs> I've already bought way, a stall nameplate. I know, I know. So, no, he did, he did a great job. My pet's great. Awesome. Well, we've actually done a lot of videos in the uh, past about new horse ownership. Um, so we'll link those in the description for you as well. And I believe one of your good friends has done some videos for us about pre-purchase exams. Excellent pre-purchase. And I want to point out that I wrote an article that's in the Horse Health Library about pre-purchase yes. exams. That's, that's very helpful. So if we didn't answer your questions today because we got sidetracked on Stan, um, you happens. can find it in Dr. Canop's video or my article.